Yo, 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 it's your boy, back at it like a bass addict, back in the garage for video number one of my top five summer bait series. And we're gonna be talking punch rigs. So punching is definitely one of my favorite techniques to use this time of year. It's one of the best ways to target big bass in the summertime. And in those dog days of summer, when that vegetation is thick, it's hot outside, those big bass like to hunker down in that vegetation um, and you just got to go in and get them so punching is one of the best ways to do that and I'm just going to give you the rundown of my gear some of the baits that I like to use my rod reel and line setup and um, all the ins and outs of how I like to approach punching this time of year so stay tuned first we'll talk about where and how I like to use the punch rig um, like I said, it's a technique that I use in thick vegetation. So I'm punching my bait through that matted vegetation or thicker submerged vegetation and getting my bait down there to those fish that are hiding in that cooler, shadier water below. So the areas that I'm looking for is areas that basically you can't get any other bait through. So it's either topped out vegetation or it's right under the surface. Um, it's too thick um, for a regular Texas rig. It's too thick for finesse techniques. Um, it might be a mat that's a little too thick for a bass to come through to eat a frog. And so the only way to go in and get those fish or to get those fish to notice your bait is to punch with a heavy weight down in there. So. A lot of what I punch around here is hydrilla, so like thick matted hydrilla, like right under the surface or um, laying over itself on top of the surface. Also hyacinth, so floating vegetation out on the California Delta is a great thing to punch. Um, primrose, so that viney stuff with the yellow flowers, that's a big thing out here in Northern California and whatever really whatever vegetation you have in your lakes um, is can be great to punch as long as it has forage in it um, and there's bass around when it's hot those fish will get under that stuff so um, that's kind of what i'm looking for um, it really can change day to day what vegetation those bass will get in and so that becomes your puzzle to figure out on any given day but that's the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. And then in terms of how I'm using the bait, it's really pretty simple. I'm just going down, I'm finding those thick mats of vegetation and I'm flipping my bait in there. I'm targeting similar to like, you're going down the bank, I'm gonna cast at anything that looks different. So if I'm flipping a mat, I'm gonna flip to the edge. If there's a point in the, the mat, that's a great place to throw. Um, I'm also gonna throw in the middle of the mat and then sometimes you'll have like two two types of vegetation that'll meet together that's also a great place to throw and then i'm letting my bait fall through usually i'm somewhat thumbing my line just to control the fall a little bit unless the fish are really aggressive and they're eating it on the fall i'll just let it free spool all the way down to the bottom but i'm letting it drop then once it hits the bottom um engaging my reel, picking up slowly, just feeling, cause sometimes you'll get bit on the fall or right as it hits the bottom, they'll grab it. So you wanna check your bait, lift up, make sure there's no fish there. And then I'll hop it a couple times and then I'm reeling it up and on to the next flip. So it's really, um, it's a numbers game. You're gonna make a lot of flips and you're not necessarily gonna get a lot of bites. So you wanna just be making as many flips as you can. You don't wanna be soaking your bait down there unless you figure out that that's what you need to do to get a bite. Sometimes that's the case, but for the most part, at least before you've gotten a bite, you wanna be um, as efficient as you can be. So just hop it a couple times and then get onto your next flip. So always be looking at your next, um, your next place that you're gonna put your bait. But that's pretty much it in terms of where and how I like to use the bait. Next, we'll talk about some of the baits that I like to use. It's really pretty simple. I have two styles of baits that I like to use. Um, when I'm punching, 
the first style of baits is just your cross style bait something with some claws that give a little action some water displacement and some flap on the fall so generally if the bass are in a more positive mood a more aggressive mood maybe they're eating the bait on the fall that's when i'll tend to go with um, cross style bait you just get more movement it's getting those fish's attention um, but on the flip side sometimes that can be too much sometimes those fish are in a negative mood sometimes you want something more subtle so this isn't always the, the my go-to but um, more often than not i'll start out with the cross style bait and if i can't get bit then i'll go to um, the other style bait but let's talk about a couple of these um, this right here is the jackal archelon i actually caught some fish on this guy yesterday um, but it's a uh, just a real simple craw profile got some ribs on it so you get a little extra water displacement this one doesn't have a super aggressive flap but you do get some movement from those claws and then this guy is also hollow on the inside which um, i really love because it just helps it hold the hook better it makes it a lot more durable you can just bury that hook inside the bait and it's just sitting in that cavity instead of tearing through um, your plastic every time you set the hook or pull it out of a mat so that's a great option it's a four and a half inch bait so it's a good size um, for a big bass i've caught some eight pounders i think yeah almost nine pounder was the biggest one i caught on that bait specifically and then the other craw style bait that i like is the strike king rage craw so that's more of an aggressive thump if you've ever thrown a rage craw you know um, on that fall, it's kicking real hard. And pull these out of there. Yeah, it's got those big flappers. So on the fall, you're just gonna get a lot of kick. It kind of will slow the fall a little bit and you'll get a lot of bites as that bait is going to bottom. Um, they'll just grab it and they might keep swimming off with it or they might just hold it and you're, you'll just feel weight on the end of your line. But those are two great options, some of my favorites. And then the other style of bait that I like to go to is just more of a dead action bait. Um, doesn't do much. Um, just it's more of a profile thing. It's subtle. And when those fish are in a negative mood, just switching over to this style of bait can get you some more bites. So the first one I'll talk about is the Missile Baits Missile Craw. This is, this one specifically is in the California Love color, but just a real slender body profile and it's got some claws on there, but they don't do much. They're just there kind of for that craw profile, but real slender, it goes through the mat great. Um, and it's not a big bulky body but it gets a lot of bites and on those tougher days when they don't want to eat the rage craw or the jackal archelon, I'll throw the missile craw and usually I can get some bites on that guy. Only downside is it's a pretty thin body, so it doesn't hold that punch hook super well after a couple of fish, usually you got to switch out baits, but it gets a lot of bites so it's kind of just the price you pay and then the other one is the missile baits d-bomb probably one of the more popular punch baits on the market um, but it's just a beaver style bait and yeah so just a simple beaver profile this one's got a lot of ribs on it so kind of just feels natural also will displace a little bit of water similar to that Archelon. And then you do get a little flap on this guy, but for the most part it's just profile. So this one, as opposed to the, the Missile Craw is a little more bulky. So if you're looking for a big bite, you might want to go with the D-Bomb as opposed to the Missile Craw. But um, this is another one of those more subtle, subtle baits. It has these, the claws are really thin, 
just very thin so it's not a hard dump like the rage craw it's just more of a flutter and those are really the baits that i like and i'll just alternate through the through the two throughout the day like i said usually i'll start out with the more aggressive craw style bait and then i might switch over to the more subtle bait or i'll have both tied on and just see what the fish like and let them tell me but that's it for baits. Next, we'll talk about color. So really in punching, I don't think color is a huge factor just because it's dark down there. Usually um, it's pretty quick. It's going in and out um, pretty quick. They're not getting a good look at the bait. So I don't think color is the deciding factor on whether a fish is gonna bite it or not, but it's just, for us, I think as anglers, it gives us the peace of mind that we're throwing the right color for whatever reason. So um, I pretty much break it down. Crawfish, so red, black and red, green pumpkin red, um, some kind of green pumpkin base. So bluegill imitators, so just straight green pumpkin, green pumpkin blue, green pumpkin purple, green pumpkin um, orange, something like that as your bluegill imitator and then just black and blue just for your if you have some dirtier water and you're punching black and blue you can't go wrong with it so that's pretty much my three color categories i don't really complicate it more than that and i i would say don't get too mixed up on color really just whatever looks good to you try it out they'll probably eat it if you're putting it in the right spot, um, I think that matters more than what color you're throwing. Now we'll get into the terminal tackle nitty gritty. It's a pretty important part of the punching technique just because you're using heavy gear, you're usually dealing with big fish, and so you really want to be um, mindful of the, the terminal tackle you're using, the weights, the hooks, especially the hooks. Um, but yeah, let's just jump into that. So. Obviously you're punching through heavy vegetation, so you got to be using a heavy weight. I like to use tungsten just because tungsten is more dense, so you get a smaller size um, for the weight that you're throwing. So if you throw an ounce lead weight, it's going to be huge and it's going to look obnoxious. It's not going to fit well in the fish's mouth. So generally guys will punch, guys or girls will punch with tungsten and that's pretty much all I throw and then usually I'm throwing anywhere from an ounce to an ounce and a half usually that range will get it done if the vegetation is a little more sparse a little lighter and you can go with the ounce and then as you get a little more thick say you're not getting through with the ounce you go up to an ounce and a quarter or an ounce and a half and that's pretty much where I stop you can go up all the way to two ounces then you just have to deal with some of the downsides you're going to lose more fish with those heavier weights so i usually most of the vegetation i'm fishing i can get through with an ounce and a half so i don't tend to go any bigger than that and then my hook i used to throw like a heavy gauged um wide gap hook but I've transitioned over to the straight shank. I kind of stopped being different and started doing what everybody else does, but it's really the the go-to, the industry standard to throw this, the heavy straight shank flipping hooks. So look for one that has a, a keeper on it. So it'll hold your plastic. That's huge for punching because you're going to go through baits anyways. Um, just having that keeper will help um, limit the amount of baits you have to go through but it's inevitable also thick wire hook do not use the light wire hook or you're gonna bend out hooks you're gonna lose fish you're gonna be pissed off so heavy wire hooks I'm gonna link all this stuff down in the description so you'll know what I use all the hooks I use I've never bent them out so I wouldn't recommend anything that I've bent out and um, yeah just whatever brand hook you like I'm sure they make a punching hook flipping hook but you want a strong hook, you want something with a keeper, 
and that long um, straight shank with a, a pretty decent gap. And then the last two components will be punch stops. So that's what's gonna hold your weight. You don't want your weight free, free flowing on your line because your weight will go through the vegetation and your bait's gonna stay up on top of the mat. So you have to peg your weight and your bait as a full package um, like this. You want it all compact together. That's how you're gonna, that's how you're gonna get through that vegetation. And then lastly, if you want to throw a punch skirt, that would be another thing to add. I don't always throw a punch skirt, but sometimes when I'm looking for a more bulky profile, if I'm imitating bluegill, or if I'm just looking for a bigger fish, I might throw a punch skirt. It's just another additional like secondary action that you're getting that uh, flare of the skirt can um, sometimes get you some bigger bites. So um, you can play with that. I would just match it to your trailer um, or your bait, I mean, and, and go with that. But that's pretty much it for terminal tackle. Lastly, we'll just talk about my rod, reel, and line setup, which is another one of that, the more important things in punching. You're dealing with big fish, heavy cover, and so you can't just go in with any kind of gear and expect to get those fish out of that stuff. You have to have specialized gear for punching. And so for me, um, the rod that I'm using is a Phoenix Recon Elite 805. It's a new rod that I'm trying out this year. I've loved it so far. I caught some fish on it yesterday. It performed great. It's a more parabolic rod in the tip. So for my punching, I like a more parabolic rod just because I can load up on those fish and as I'm fighting them in the mat it's gonna keep those fish pinned I'm not if I have a broomstick of a rod I feel like it's gonna be going in and out of its load um, and you might put some slack in your line that's just me personally some people like a broomstick of a rod I don't I like that more parabolic rod I'll put some clips uh, or a clip of me like loaded up on a fish with my rod so you can see kind of the action but it's soft in the tip and then it just completely shuts off straight back on after that so you have to have a rod that's strong to get those fish out of that heavy cover but for me i like to have some give in the tip and then for my reel i'm using a shimano bantam mgl it's a XG, so in Shimano terms, that's their highest gear ratio. Um, I think it's an eight to one. So a lot of line pickup for that size reel. And I like the faster reel just because sometimes those fish are gonna eat it on the fall. They're gonna keep moving. And you wanna be able to pick up, engage your reel, pick up that line, get tight, and then give them the beans. And then the other factor is just efficiency so you want to be able to reel your bait up quick and get on to the next flip so that's why I use those high gear ratio reels and would highly recommend that Shimano Bantam it's just a super solid feeling reel you know how some reels will feel like real plasticky they have a lot of give that reel is solid and for punching that's what you want so check that on um, that reel out for sure and then my line um, I'm using Daiwa J Braid, 65 pound, and this is the chartreuse color. So it's a bright fluorescent um, line. Shout out to my boy Jamon. He put me on that. But the idea behind the bright color braid is that you can see it. So you can detect those light bites. You can line watch. And then I'll just color like six feet of the braid down to my bait just for that visibility like i said it's dark down there i don't think it really matters but just for our peace of mind i'll sharpie that um just to be more stealth but 65 pound braid at least always some people like to throw 80. i think 65 is fine i've never broken 65 pound braid but um definitely 
at least 65 pound braid, heavy rod, big fish, just you gotta have the line to deal with that. So um, yeah, that's my recommendation. It's all gonna be linked down below. And that's pretty much it for punching for me. Um, like I said, it's one of my favorite techniques. I've caught a lot of big fish doing it. Some nine pounders, eight pounders, all the way down. Um, you can catch some small ones on it, but those big girls live in that jungle. So don't be afraid to get in that stuff and, and pull them out. It's a great way to target fish this time of year. And really, um, you can catch them punching all times of year if you have um, heavy vegetation. But especially in the summer when those fish are looking for that shade, it, it can just be a really big deal. So if you've never tried punching, um, definitely give it a shot. You got all the info you need now um, from this video. And if you already were familiar with punching and you just wanted some extra tips, hopefully this helps. Um, but either way, go out there, catch some giants. This is one of the best ways to do it. And that's a wrap for video number one. Be on the lookout next week for video number two. Not sure what I'm gonna talk about. Might be frogs, might be chatterbaits. You never know, but tune in on that. And as always, I appreciate y'all watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.